Yo, dudes, Born here. I got myself a Brad Holmes hoodie. Remember when he wore this at the combine? Oh, that's my uh, what I wear for Lions attire now, at least uh, on my upper body. So today we're doing a mock draft of the Minnesota Vikings. This is part two of those type of videos because we as uh, Detroit Lions people, we got to be aware of what our uh, rivals within the NFC North are up to and how their drafts might affect our draft. And when I did my research on the Minnesota Vikings and what their draft plans might be, uh, that being on The Athletic, on NFLTradeRumors.co, and on PFF, I found that they are very similar uh, to the Lions in terms of they have one of the top offenses in the NFL and arguably the worst defense in the NFL. So it wouldn't surprise me if they went almost all defense in their draft. And for them, I don't think they're going to do any trades because I think uh, their GM, whose name is very hard for me to pronounce, by the way, so I won't even attempt it uh, out of respect for you know his name and everything. I don't think he's going to attempt any trades because last year uh, he got fleeced by the liking Vikings and his former co-worker and his friend uh, Brad Holmes. They both were um, the Rams uh, front office tree. And then right after that, he got, I believe he got guilt tripped by Mr. Gutekunst of the Packers into uh, trading, allowing the Packers to trade up with the Vikings fix in the second round so that they can draft Christian Watson. So I think they're all done with trades for that. So, and it looks like their needs basically all around defense, you know, cornerbacks, especially some linebackers and uh, wide receivers, since I guess one of their other uh, wide receivers, Adam Thielen is gone. So the big difference between the Vikings and the Lions, though, they do not have a lot of draft picks. When I did the Packers mock draft, like they had a bunch of them in day three picks, but they only have like five so far in this draft. And the majority of them are all on day three. So Let's go ahead and see what I did for them here. The big majority of people and the most sense-making a move for the first round, I think, for them was the cornerback, Deon, uh, Deontay Banks uh, from Maryland. Given that cornerback is arguably their biggest need, and he is one of the ones that tends to fall to them in their spot at pick 23 in the first round. However, I did not pick him because when I did this mock draft a several to a uh, few times, actually, he didn't always fall to them at number 23. And plus, I get the feeling that the Vikings are now one of those new generational innovative teams that uh, really like wide receiver and would prioritize trying to find trying to find a good wide receiver over, uh, you know, just trying to plug holes and that sort of thing. So for this pick, I went with Jordan Addison, wide receiver at USC. He's one of the few wide receivers I know that uh, has met with the Vikings. So um, went with that. And he's, I'd say, like a Jamison Williams type. Uh, probably not as fast as J-Mo, but uh, he is really good at route running and he knows you know, how to manipulate uh uh, put defensive players in the secondary and that sort of thing. And he'd be that type of wide receiver, like a good wide receiver too, uh, with Jefferson, who's obvious, Jamar Jefferson, who is obviously number one. Um, unless the Vikings are looking for like an X receiver, this is, I guess, and if you're not getting uh, banks, then this would be the pick I would assume. And then the next pick is all the way down in the late third round after the Lions fifth pick would be the Vikings second pick in round three, number 87. And here I addressed the Marvion Overshone, a uh, linebacker from Texas, who is basically another secondary player, even though he's listed as linebacker. Uh, you know, linebacker was another need for the Vikings. And this particular player is one of the best linebackers in the draft in terms of coverage. So you'd be basically like another safety for them there and be able to help with the passes and that sort of thing. I hardly ever draft him for the Lions just because even though the Lions need a coverage linebacker, just because he doesn't appear to be really good at tackling. And 
as I said before, Dan, uh, I think Dan Campbell has emphasized how important tackling is. So I, and I know Overshone has met with the Lions, but um, I think because of the lack of tackling that that would disqualify him for here, but the Vikings would still find enough value in him to be able to draft him here. And he should be available in this spot. Round four, pick 119, I went with the cornerback who I did notice that the Vikings did meet with. Uh, I believe he was one of their top 30 visits. Starling Thomas, uh, the fifth from UAB, cornerback. Um, this is, as I've mentioned before, the day three picks, I tend to spend very little time trying to even guess who they are because who knows what can happen with any of those picks. But um, this is somebody I know the Vikings – have met with and they do have a big need at uh cornerback so he seemed like a logical pick there round five 158 uh, i doubled up on linebacker here with another person i know that they met with uh, mohammed diabete i believe that's how you say his name if not i'm sorry uh linebacker out of utah um he could probably might go more of the sixth or seventh round but i had them uh reaching up here because I think he'd be somebody that could they could like and have at linebacker who could be an actual linebacker and not so much a cover linebacker like Overshawn. So, um, so really trying to address defense here, as you can see. And then this last pick, I have no idea if they met with the Vikings. And I really struggled because I tried to do do this mock draft for the Vikings a few different ways to try to get everybody that they met with, but um, that last pick always kind of made things weird and interesting because like I'll pick somebody like an Eri lit Ricks who I know they met with at like round 387. And then one of these other two uh, players, Thomas or Diabete are not there. So I try, I went with the one where the, these guys were in, and then I just went with BPA on uh, another position of need for the Vikings, which was also defensive tackle and, um, the very top of the board at that point of round six, pick 211, was uh, defen uh, defensive lineman Jacob Slade out of Michigan State, who was, uh, I believe, six, five, six foot five and 300 plus pounds. And uh, um, yeah, give him some depth at uh, a defensive line and a big body to try to move when they need to. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much my draft. And this one was pretty quick and even though the vikings are in cap hell right now i believe they might be arguably the the one team that has the most uh salary to try to dump i still think they're definitely a threat to the lions uh for the nfc north just because of their offense alone and i think that's where the nfl is going in terms of uh you know it's a passing league and the teams that uh are the most successful are the ones that have really good offenses, especially with when you have Justin Jefferson and Dalvin cook, you know, you know, cause you see the Kansas city chiefs win two super bowls in the last four, three or four years or so. And then you're starting to realize, okay, uh, the old motto of defense wins championships isn't necessarily true anymore for the NFL because now it's, you realize, okay, one side of the ball needs to be elite and the other side needs to be good enough to complement that elite other side of the ball. And if you have an elite offense like the Chiefs have proven, like the Rams uh, have shown with their offense and then have enough, just enough playmakers on the other side of the ball to help complement it, then that's when you can win a Super Bowl. And yeah, the Vikings, if they upgrade their defense enough, um, even though they got lucky a bunch of times in their wins last season, uh, I think they could still be a legitimate threat, even though it looks like they're probably going to try to set up their team for the long term and trying to, you know, address some needs. Um, there's rumors about them going quarterback too. Um, I know they met with Tanner McKee, uh, but I don't know about anybody else. So yeah, they're similar to the Lions because I think the Lions are also trying to be like that type of team because both their GMs are part of that Rams front office tree where you're trying to make us elite offense and make the defense just good enough to complement the elite offense. So 
we'll see with the uh, the Vikings. Um, I feel confident the Lions should be able to beat them any time, uh, assuming that, you know, they make the correct calls at the correct times. But uh, the Vikings have shown that they can be formidable enough, especially that game last year against the Buffalo Bills, who were the Super Bowl favorites at the time. So, but they definitely have to continue to improve their defense. So that's all I have for you guys. Uh, go Lions, one pride. The NFL draft is almost here.